Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh Bashem Al Shai Bashem Makak Wadash. And double honors to that apostles of the great millstone that have taught me this truth. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai Bashem Makak Wadash. And also including the bishops, if I didn't say. And as well as I will say, Yahweh Bashem Al Shai Baka to the 144,000 as well. And as well as the one third that do follow. And it's your brother Laban, of course. Now, I want to respond to this interview. Now, I'm not going to be able to cover every single thing, but I'm going to cover the most important things that has been said in this interview. And it was addressed twice. Now, in the beginning of this interview, no BSing around, um, you know, Vladimir Putin goes into the history of things and if I remember, because I watched all of it, he was speaking about the Soviet Union, the year of, of 49, which, which is reasonable from the beginning there because right around that time, you had, coming from the West, um, they considered the Soviet Union a threat. So what they decided to do is they decided to get together the nations among Europe got together with America and formed the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Alliance. All right. And um, which was at the end of the, the Second World War. And um, just to fast forward 42 years onwards um, in 91, or let's just back up a little bit. Let's even deal with the Cold War, because we know that the Cold War only lasted for a few years, from like the late 80s, and then it ended in 91. So in 91, you had the, the collapsing of um, the Soviet Union, and what should have been the same, likewise, concerning the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. However, that didn't happen. That did not happen. What happened was is that there was more members that was there and there to the border of Russia joining in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Okay, which, let's, let me just do this real quick. Let's, let's just begin right here and let's play this video. Since we're, we're in the year 91, right? <clears throat> so as you can see, since 94, these countries, as you can see, turned into partnership for peace and we know how the devil operates and um you know edomites recognize how other edomites operate so just to get a scripture out i want to read the book of daniels um eight and uh verse what is it uh 25 right as this reads and through his policy also he shall cause craft to uh, prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. Now, originally this is referring to Antiochus Epiphanes, how he came across the Israelites at the time. Now, what I want to do is I want to read another precept. War was in his heart. Now, I don't know exactly where this precept is at. So what I'm going to do, I want to do this instead. War was in his, his heart. Yeah, Psalms 55 and verse 21. And the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart, and his words were softer than oil, and yet were they drawn swords. So that's exactly what Antiochus Epiphanes came to do, which is another term you can you can um you can you can use on that is um called double dealing, you know, professing something that you 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 say you're gonna do, but you do the, the opposite what you said you're going to do. So um, when, when in 94, they all got together, all of these countries here uh, with, what is it, the, the North Carolina Treaty Organization, they all became what? A partnership for peace, which had nothing to do with peace. 
they would just preserve. Partnership for peace is really saying that we're going to preserve y'all so that eventually y'all can join with us. You know, that's just my way of putting it. Partnership for peace just means preserved. Because years later down the line, these partnership for peace countries would then later join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization as we're going to play this some more of this video here. See, by 2008, these countries which were uh, positioned for partnership for peace now became members of NATO. And see, this is the reason as to why Vladimir Putin is on the edge, and he should be. Only because if you see an, an opposing force coming against you, never and dead to your border, doing backdoor deals so that you can join other nations and get them involved in the alliance. Come on, Russia then has to react and respond the same way because as well as Russia does know has taken everything into account how America has done nation by nation dirty. So Russia knows what it's up against. Russia knows that this is a nation that's um, going beyond things, getting their own way um, by, um, you know, throwing their authority towards the eastern side of, of, of the world or the globe. Okay. Or, you know, all around these countries that are... Um, leading towards the eastern side to go against Russia because Russia, as let's just be real about it, Russia and the, the Soviet Union has always been a threat to NATO. That's That energy has always remained and um, that energy is much more stronger now. All right. So what they decided to do is to get all of these nations in conjunction just to, so that they can mitigate the one day thing that could very well happen is that there could be a resurface of the Soviet Union, okay? And then eventually, if possible, maybe one day we can take over Russia. Being that, as well as the world knows, and information has been brought out there, that the Western power is really a gunning for war more than any other, any other, you know, any other parts around the world among these nations is concerned, all right? Now, what I want to do is, because is in this interview, he mentions that <clears throat> Back in 2007, um, him and President Bush at the time had words for one another. And in this article, this article, you know, will tell you that uh, Bush went right over to Vladimir Putin to discuss the missile defense systems. So going back over here. So now that you have all of this right here, you have the NATO members. <laughs> join in excuse me you have the, the members that were once upon a time um non-nato members becoming nato members so now they're close so if if, they, if these countries are, are allied with a, with a, with nato now you have more power of course because obviously even in ancient wars when a nation fights and conquers lands, that becomes the territory. So this has now become NATO territory, which is closer to the border of Russia. So now that they have all of all of these, these borders, all of a sudden now, like being that this was wrong anyway to begin with, just to top it off, now in Ukraine, or, or let's just say countries near Russia, they set up what? Missile defense systems, they set up missiles all around the place. And this is what was had in discussion with Bush and Putin in 2007. So let's read some of this right over here. President George Bush flew to Europe to confront, excuse me, to confront Vladimir Putin today. Um, <laughs> this is no longer the day, he's 16 years old. <laughs> over U.S. plans to base a new missile defense system in former Russian satellite countries. The White House described as unhelpful a warning by Mr. Putin that if the U.S. goes ahead with its plan, Russia will retaliate by training its missiles on European targets. Echoing the White House, 
line, as NATO spokesman James um, Apotharai said, these kinds of comments are unhelpful and, and unwelcome. U.S.-Russian re relation has deteriorated sharply, as it would, since the two leaders met six years ago. And Mr. Bush said he had looked into Putin's soul <laughs> and that he liked what he saw there. Speaking to reporters about Air Force One, Stephen Hadley, uh, the National Security Advisor at the White House, acknowledged that uh, there has been some escalation in the rhetoric. Right, because, you know, obviously this is 16 years ago. I don't really remember every single thing. But, you know, I now, as I read this, of course, have in mind that obviously Putin had an issue with this and as he, as he should have an issue with this because, again, um, this NATO expansion onwards is, is in violation anyway. Then to add the, the, the missiles being stationed or missile defense systems stationed in these areas near Russia. So then in 2008, guess what also happens? NATO military is stationed in that area. So this reads that NATO summit in Bucharest in April 2008, NATO decided it would not yet offer membership to Georgia and Ukraine. Nevertheless, NATO and Secretary General J. App, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, they who Sheffer said that Georgia and Ukraine would eventually become members. So see, that's the goal is that they would eventually become members. If, if the goal is this for peace. And the expansion of um, NATO is for purpose of peace. Excuse me. That's what I originally wanted to say. Why would they set up military training bases in Ukraine? Why would they do this for? Because the because it's very, very clear what they exactly would like to do one day. And what they would like to do one day is to come at Russia. All right. That's why they didn't um, pull back during the time of the, um, the cold, the end of the Cold War. Like the Soviets did at the time. Okay. And this is the reason why this prophecy is going to come to pass. Going back to Vladimir Putin in this case. Vladimir Putin is at a point. There's no need to really do any more talks. Because it's reached way beyond that point. Now, really, what it's all about now is, is, is gathering the missiles and, and as well as all of the military personnel together. Set and prepared for war because America is doing what they're doing and as well as not just America, but the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in general. And this is the reason why Jeremiah 50 will come to pass. As this reads, uh, for lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country and they shall set themselves in array against her from thence she shall be taken. And their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man, and none shall return in vain. And Chaldea shall be a spoil, and all that spoil her shall be satisfied, save the Lord. So Jeremiah is envisioning destruction of this Babylon, because the way ancient Babylon got destroyed was not in like as he visualized this Babylon. All right. And the Babylon that he was in. So this is what's getting ready to happen. And the, the assembly of great nations, all you got to do is, um, for those that know the precepts, of course, read Ezekiel 38, and it would explain to you the assembly of those great nations. Because it's about time that they get themselves in preparation because of what's been going on due to NATO activity, and as well as them gathering all of these members and then setting up missiles near and there around the border of Russia. All right, let's read another priest of Revelations 13 and verse um, two. And the beast which I saw was likened unto a leopard, which is referenced into the ancient Greeks, because that was the first kingdom of the Edomites. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And why is this beast likened and why does this say this as well? Because the feet is the last part of the body, right? Because it's going to be the rushes that's going to bring this place down, this Roman system down to his feet. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion, which represents Great Britain. Great Britain is the, the silent power behind the Western power, which is the dominant power right now, which is becoming undominant. 
and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and the great authority which is representing Rome the dragon represents the Roman system so eventually what will be had on this planet earth which will be seen is we're going to see the destruction of Babylon which is America and this is what we've been talking about for ages Russia, Iran, and all of the allies rising up America, and as well as as it even also reads in the book of Jeremiah 50 and verse, um, I think it's in verse what eight, Salaki, no, um, yeah, verse 12, and your mother shall be sore confounded, and she that bear you shall be ashamed. Now, let's read the book of Revelations um, 17 real quick. Verse 11. And the beast that was, which is Rome, and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and go of into perdition. When you go back into, if I'm correct, the 1600s, you had what was called the, um, the 13, col 13 colonies, which was established by the British, which it was really due to the British that invigorated um the American system that we now have today. Okay. And even when we fast forward, even to the time of the second world war, um, as I can quite remember, if I'm correct, if my memory serves me correctly. And if, and if, and if I'm wrong, I'll post it on post production. Um, during the time prior before, I believe the second world war, if I'm correct, I think it's world war one, but, um, between these world wars, prior before one of the world wars, Britain was basically in this in this you know Britain was pretty much the um the higher power at the time, and as well as even the currency, the pound was. So after the world war that had took place, that was all said and done. America became the um, the superpower on the planet Earth. Now Britain was always the solid power, but even from a currency standpoint, the dollar became the supreme currency all around the planet Earth. All right. Just to mention that. So I'll, like I said, I'll put it on post-production to show you brothers what I'm saying. So when you really check out the history, even around the 1600s and even when it comes after the world wars that, that have taken place prior, um, America was birthed out of Britain and, and America became what they became because of Britain. All right. That's the order of how, how that got down, how America became the superpower that it is today and then right along with his allies, but primarily focusing on America. So again, let's read this again. The beast that was, and he is not even, he is the eighth and is of the seventh that go into perdition. So now when we read the book of Jeremiah 50, um, in verse verse 12 again your mother shall be so confounded which is great britain she that bear you shall be ashamed and behold the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness a dry land and a desert you see and the, where's the hindermost of the nations the hindermost of the nations is primarily focusing on the western hemisphere which is the last part which is what the word hindermost means the last part of the planet earth let's look up that word hindermost just just to um show you what i mean akarayaf right akarayaf which means after part end issue event a lot of times prophetic for future times posterity last so we know that things begin right from left right originally now in in the in you know in the west we've been trained to 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 write from from left to right but originally things begin from the right then to the left so the last part of the planet earth like us in the west we've been trained to look at things so the word is um akhar rayaf 
a karayaf, just to correct myself there, which means after part end, an issue, an event, latter times prophetic, for future times posterity, last hindermost. So it just means the end. Now in the Western world, we've been trained to look at things from um, the left all the way to the right, but in actuality, things are supposed to begin from right to left. So the left part of the planet Earth is the hindermost part of the planet Earth, which is would be in location, which the land that would be in the hindermost parts of the Earth would be the land mass, which is called America, which was also known as um, Osirif. And I believe Osirif means the same thing. Akharayaf, Osirif, which means the last part. That just came to my mind, actually. Wow. You see, when you know your words to a degree, man, certain other words come together and it makes sense. But yeah, that's why um, America was known as Osirif. Because it's a Hebrew word. And that explains why. Um, and you see that that explains why the land America used to be known as Osherif, which goes back to the Hebrew word, Akharayaf, which means the end. So you see prophecy. Is, is actually in the happening, man. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to look up that word, um, Hindemos. Even though I broke it down, but we're going to look it up anyway, just to bring home the point a little bit more. Go into these um, biblical usages and meanings. Uh, let me see. This.